At the end of the previous video, we talked about the concept of collection variables. In every GenXus object, we can define variables based on simple or structured data types that allow us to store the data of an entity. These can be numerical values, texts, or the details of a country. We've seen that when defining a variable, we can select the isCollection checkbox to set this variable as a collection. Collection variables, regardless if they're numeric, character, or SDT collections, will offer their own methods for managing that collection. The count method allows us to know the number of elements in the collection. It returns that number, so it's a read-only method. The add method allows us to add an element to the collection. By default, this element is added at the end of the collection, but it's possible to change its position. For example, if we want to load the collection of countries in the database, how do we do it? Even though in the next video we'll see the simple way to load data using a data provider, let's see this other option now. When variables are declared, the program already assigns them a memory space. But we can always request another memory space for the variables so as not to use them twice. That is, we are reinitializing the SDT variable, and that's why we're using the new operator. In this case, it's necessary, because otherwise, we'll always be overwriting that memory space. So if we don't ask for new space, we'll always be adding the same item to the collection. And we'll have a collection of n items with the same values. The reason is that the country item variable is not restarted after the add action, as you might think. The remove method allows you to remove an item from the collection from its index. The range of the indexes starts at 1 and ends with the value returned by the count method. The clear method allows you to remove all items from the collection. The sort method allows you to sort the collection. If the elements are of SDT type, then we can have the collection ordered by a member of that structure. For example, by country name. Then, to run through a collection, we have the command for item in collection. As this command runs through the collection, it loads each item to the country item variable. This way, we can print it on the output. Let's see then how the procedure finally looks. To see it running, we press F5. Next, we'll look into a much simpler and higher level way to load a collection of SDTs. It'll also be useful to load a simple SDT.